Hey everybody, it's Robert Cadnes with the Chatham County Public Information Office and I wanna thank you again for checking out this edition of the chat. Today's guest is someone who isn't new to the engineering department here at the county and she's assumed a new role there and her name is Angela Bliss. Angela, thank you for joining us today. You're welcome, thanks for having me. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself for those who don't know you and your newly assumed role. Sure. So I have been with the county for a couple years in the stormwater uh, industry. So I've gotten to, to do a lot with our stormwater uh, annual report and getting to work in the community and, and, and visit schools and educate the, the families and community about stormwater. And so I've transitioned just recently into the floodplain administrator uh, and the uh, community um, the community rating system, the mm -hmm. CRS program manager. Which is really important. It is incredibly important. And if um, if you have a flood insurance policy, you'll want to learn what you can or, or reach out about the CRS and, and the efforts there. Because a lot of the efforts uh, that our former floodplain administrator, Michael Blakely, did mm -hmm. uh, got um, a lot of our residents some discounts on their insurance, their flood insurance, because of how much effort we were putting into the CRS program. So the CRS program is a big deal. Uh, especially when you're looking at community engagement and how many dollars uh, that that's saving the Chatham County community for their flood insurance. You know, in, in assuming this new role, um, what are some of the projects right now that are on your plate that are keeping you busy? Uh, mm -hmm. So what the, the process is now for uh, homes that are in what's called the SFHA, which is the Special Flood Hazard Area, mm -hmm. um, for those homes that are typically near the, near the water, the lower lying homes, uh, like AE and VE you might see or you might know that the home, homeowners might know they have a, a flood policy. But in those homes, any activity that is done on those parcels needs to come in for a floodplain review. So the floodplain reviews for porches and, and pools uh, is keeping me busy and getting those documents reviewed and, and helping folks understand that the SFHA, the zone that they're in for flooding, uh, has a lot to say with what is allowed on that parcel and uh, what might be constructed and how it might be constructed. So helping guide them for their protection uh, and then for the protection of their neighbors in their same floodplain area. And so the floodplain review is quite a busy process. And then we are working to revise and update our floodplain um, ordinance. It's called the flood protection, uh, flood damage protection ordinance. Right. And so we're working to get that updated and make it more user friendly for the resident and, um, and pull in those pieces that we need to, to stay compliant with FEMA's program. You know, it sounds like there's a lot of what you do is really community education and community awareness. Yes, that's my favorite part. So, <laughs> so it you, is. You're obviously very good at it, Love you this. know, and we have a lot of new people to the area, moved here from out of state, um, and even those that are here. What is, if you can explain, the Chatham County local flood hazard? Sure, so in Chatham County, it's very low lying. The topography is relatively flat. Um, we have uh, freshwater systems coming down from inland, going out to sea. We have the, the uh, oceanic systems coming in tidally, and, and you're having that double high tides each day, basically, that we're dealing with. And you couple that with a rain event, and you're looking at water hitting you from, from many angles. <laughs> so, so we have, we're, we're poised in a beautiful part of the country, and beautiful part of the state, but we are, we do have flood hazards. And so coming over from the stormwater uh, side of the things, uh, it was how the, the land drains and helping the mm -hmm. drainage uh, and protecting parcels and, and properties that way. With this particular floodplain component, the shift does seem to, to come in from more of a tidal storm event education um, knowing, you know, if we do have a rain event that's coupled with a high tide, mm -hmm. how is this going to impact parcels in that lower lying area? So the education is huge. Um, we, if you think of folks coming in from Tennessee or, or Wisconsin where they're not dealing with a tidal flow uh, and a tidal flux, um, being able to explain tidal cycle and then even the storm surge event. And, and I don't want to pick on inland folks from inner parts of the, of the states, but there's a lot of our, our locals that also um, haven't seen damage, so therefore damage from a storm is hard to fathom. And so understanding that it, we are poised on the coast, there are storms that are possible, there are flooding impacts that are possible from the, the storm surge and the rain events. Um, but, but getting that awareness 
and helping complacency not settle in. Um, and the, I know I talked about flood insurance, and that's a way you can protect yourself should something happen. Um, and so just being aware of what folks need to know and helping get that word out of, if you're in this area, please know these hazards exist with water. And this is how you can protect yourself. And then, um, you know, always going higher protects from water, right. uh, but also with that comes that price tag of either raising a home or building a home higher. And so. It's, it's really multi-dimensional because we were talking off camera and you had mentioned, we not only get it from the sky, we get it from the beach, right? And then sometimes it, for the, the estuary, and then right? the and then the estuary is out to you know the marshes right. and um, give us if you can a thirty thousand foot view of the f the uh, flood mitigation plan here and why it's so needed. Yeah, so if you if you kind of look at uh, Chatham County and and the unincorporated pieces and parts of Chatham County, um, you'll you. The low-lying piece, um, it's a floodplain. It's one area. It's uh, water knows no boundary. Water knows no property line. Water knows downhill. <laughs> and so right. having that mentality of, yes, you are your homeowner, and you have your parcel of land, and you want to be a good steward of that parcel. You want to have a good investment in that parcel, and you want to protect that. But that is an important part of home ownership. I mean, there's that pride of having your keys, right? right. And, um, but in essence, you're not in it alone. And there are so many neighbors, there's so many communities, there's so many municipalities that are part of the bigger floodplain. So having agencies and municipalities that work together um, with our ordinances and, and, and enforcements, per se, to, to protect that floodplain, protects the property owner, even if it might feel, they might feel it might limit what they can do, there's a protection there, but it also can protect the neighbor and the person downstream or the person that's, that's across the creek or across the tidal river. So um, the 30,000 foot view would be, we're not in it alone, it's a joint venture, mm -hmm. and, and with that comes um, the need for rules and regulations to protect that floodplain area. That leads me to my next question, which I know that you're an expert on, which is the flood damage prevention ordinance. Yeah. Big one. Yeah, it is a big one. And I'll tell you, until um, moving to the county and being involved in the stormwater program and now as floodplain administrator, it was not one I was completely aware about and uh, aware of. And so um, as an educator at heart, it's important to get the word out that you are in the special flood hazard area. And with that comes some uh, beautiful views and, and great scenery, but at the same time, some additional responsibility, and you want to be wise in what's being done in, in your area. And so um, for those of you that are in a special flood hazard area or a AE10 or a VE zone, or you, you hear random codes like LIMWA, Line of Moderate Wave Action. Oh, wow. So there's tons of acronyms, but um, for, for those of us that are um, dealing with the the, the ordinance and, and having that regulation upon us, it's um, so much for your, the protection, and like I said, of the, the bigger view um, and, and the, the regulations and whatnot of, of, of being safe and being wise and what's built and what's done. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I glanced at the website today. Um, the the engineering website it's really easy to navigate good to hear and <laughs> it, well from if I could do it everyone out there can do it easily um, what are some what do you think are some of the most we kind of touched on them a little bit but what do you think are some of the most important issues or topics that folks need to know when navigating the website because it's really informative oh good to hear um, yes so when you go onto the county's webpage and under the floodplain program we've tried to make the tabs uh, under that uh, top tab navigation we tried to make them quite easy and go directly to what you needed and so um, the one when we were talking about development in um, the special flood hazard area uh, and, the, and you tie in the ordinance the ordinance is listed there so if you're not sure what can I do in my zone that can help you. If you need a, um, 
uh, an application because you want to uh, put a pool in or convert a sun sunroom and you're in the SFHA, it'll have that application in there. Um, it, it has other information to help guide you in the process and more importantly it has the contact button and so you can always call mm -hmm. the engineering office and, and get uh, Christine or I to, to help you navigate your decisions. So that way you're not wasting time and resources. Which is really, really crucial, yes. especially if, you know, people are looking for information, they don't know where to go. It is a one-stop shop, essentially. Um, anything that I missed that you think is important folks should know about? I think a lot, of, the most important thing is know your zone. Mm -hmm. um, if you, and, and even if you're, if, if you hear about the special flood hazard area and how that's linked to the regulation of the ordinance, um, but even if you're in an X zone or what's called a shaded X, even if, if you have the funds and the ability, I would encourage a flood policy for that protection. Um, it, it, it can get you the resources quicker if a flood should happen. Uh, it, it opens up some doors for funding should a disaster happen. Um, and and you, there's all, you, know, you can reach out to your insurance agent for more information on, on what your policy would be. But I just encourage you to know what zone you're in mm -hmm. um, and be aware of the ordinance before you do some type of action. Um, a lot of folks uh, do not understand about the ordinance and the limitations on certain uh, zones. And then when I come in and, and I, I, they, you have to re re remove the fill that you've just placed on your parcel, well, that's lost money right. from the dirt you purchased mm -hmm. and lost money from the dirt removal. So being aware of what your property might be regulated by is important from floodplain to beyond. <laughs> but, right, but just right. being aware of the ordinances in place. Awesome. Um, I will put a link at the end of the podcast of the engineering department will, where you can navigate, have all your questions really answered there. Um, Angela, I can't thank you enough Thanks. for taking the time. I know that you're busy assuming your new role. Right. I wish you the best of thank luck you. in the new position. And for Angela Bliss, I'm Robert Katniss. We will see you next time on The Chat.